Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. Hashtag not Friday. So I have featured this milling machine in a number of different videos that I have done here on the Functional Print Friday channel. Um, we did some 3D printed uh, mounts for all of the different DRO scales on this machine. Uh, and we did a set of table covers as well that are sitting back here. Uh, but that is not what we're talking about today. Uh, as you can see, I've got the machine partially disassembled here because I'm having a problem with this guy. Uh, I was having some unusual tool wear and I took some measurements and it seemed like I was having some run out in the, uh, the spindle. I had gone through my collets and uh, gone through the, the small collection of little precision ground uh, bars that I have and tried a couple and it seemed like I was consistently measuring some run out. Um, and I also tried like three different R8 uh, drill chucks and it seemed that all of them were way out of the spec uh, that you know, they should be. And I realize, you know, you're not going to get precision with a, a drill truck, but they were way out to the point where um, you could see the run out in the end of just like a regular jobber length bit. So got to looking around, you know, how do you even measure whether you have a problem with the uh, the spindle? And they've got these things called test bars uh, that go into the spindle of the machine. Now I've got the spindle out and this head is turned sideways here, but um, the spindle was in here and a test bar would go into that spindle um, and the whole thing's precision ground, and then you turn the spindle, and any runout that you measure on the test bar is going to be an error somewhere in the machine. Could be in the spindle, could be in the bearings, but it's somewhere in the machine. So I shopped around, and yeah, they're expensive, uh, like very expensive. <laughs> so I, I kind of quickly ruled that out and went back to fiddling around with the different measuring tools that I have here, trying to... Um, consistently come up with where the problem was, and I was just chasing my tail. Uh, you you end up trying to trust something and then compare that to something else, and when those some things that you're trusting are not precision pieces of equipment, it, you, you don't know where the error really is. So I reached out to one of the companies that I found that sells test bars uh, because they're, they're based in the U.S., um, Glasser and Machine Tool, and they said, yeah, you know, an R8 test bar is the way to go if you're trying to see if you have an error in, you know, the machine spindle or bearings or, you know, uh, or if you're, if it's just in your, in your collets or, you know, in the pieces of, uh, you know, ground bar that you're, that you're checking with. Um, and these guys stepped up and, you know, they, they understand just, I'm just a small guy working out of my shop um, who runs a YouTube channel. And they offered this guy to me at a reduced price. Uh, it was still expensive, uh, you know, so I don't know if you want to call this video partially sponsored or not. I'm just trying to, you know, fully disclose uh, that these guys did help me out with this a bit. Um, and if this is anywhere near as precise as this spec sheet says, I think we're going to have no problem determining where uh, the error in this machine is, whether it is... Uh, in the spindle or if it is in the, the other stuff that I've been trying to, to measure with. Uh, you can see this guy is, again, if it's in spec, is incredibly accurate. In fact, I probably don't even have measuring equipment that would measure any variation or run out in this test bar. So I glossed over that spec sheet pretty quick, so I wanted to go back to that for a second. When I first opened this, I thought maybe these numbers were in thou and, you know, an acceptable range of five thou on a test bar is pretty bad, right? But no, that's in millimeter. So it's saying that, you know, there's an acceptable range here of run out uh, at the extreme length of the bar of five micron, and it's within two micron. And up here closer to the R8 taper, the acceptable range would be, uh, again, five micron, and it's only one micron. And then here is our diameter. The diameters really aren't that important, you know, if we're trying to measure for run out, but it's nice to see that they are that close. They are within uh, two micron of the, the 30 millimeter that is specced. Um, and length is 250, and I think it's precision ground on the end. So it's saying that the, it doesn't give an acceptable range there, but it's saying it tested at 250. Really, these are the two that matter. Um, the, the relationship of run out between the taper here um, and the position one and position two. So let's get started. All right, so what I didn't shoot any video of was actually testing the spec on this machine before I disassembled it. Um, I, I mean, I didn't disassemble it for fun. Um, <laughs> when I got the test bar from Glassern, uh, the first thing I did was get it into the spindle of the machine, 
Um, I disconnected the, the belt from the drive pulley just to make sure that any difference in the pulley, um, you know, in, in, in OD was not going to be, you know, preloading the spindle at the top uh, a different amount. And I turned the spindle by hand and I took a bunch of measurements and I did write those down. So at one inch down from the spindle nose, I was seeing half a thou run out at five inches down, uh, two, two point six five thou. And at 8.75 inches down from the nose of the spindle, I was seeing 4.6 thou. Now, Precision Matthews doesn't publish a spec for this machine. So I don't know what is in and out of range at different distances from the spindle nose, but I think we could probably all agree that on a brand new ultra precision machine, particularly at the five inches down, because that's a range that you would really expect to still be able to do some pretty precision milling. Again, that's from the spindle nose. 2.65 thou. I mean, it's pretty high. Honestly, I think the runout is less on this piece of crap drill press. So, I, you know, I don't want to make it sound like I'm bad-mouthing Precision Matthews. I'm not. These guys have been very good. Um, I've been working with their support for a couple months now, trying to chase this issue, and they've been responsive. They've sent me parts. Uh, again, not trying to bad-mouth them. Um, I just want to get this machine working within spec or, you know, within a usable spec for a home shop. All right, so let's test the precision of my test rig first. Uh, this is the R8 test bar from Glasser and Machine Tools. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it is spinning here in two precision V-blocks that are clamped to the bed of the, or the table of the mill. Uh, there is a precision ground surface on this end, and that's how I'm going to check the taper, because what I can do is I can just put a piece of uh, aluminum down here at the end, and as I turn this, push on this surface down here. So let's do that first. A little bit tricky to keep pressure on it. I am seeing, let's say I'm not seeing any needle movement. Okay, just making sure that we are on it because um, I'm not seeing any needle movement at all. Jeez, uh, I mean, it doesn't seem to repeat. So I'm, I'm seeing like it move maybe like a quarter of a tenth, but it doesn't repeat. I think it has more to do with how much I'm pressing against that piece of aluminum down there at the end. But it's less than, uh, it's less than a tenth regardless. And we're down here towards the end of the taper. So let's check. Let's do kind of an idiot check here and check on the test bar itself. Uh, yeah, again, the needle, actually the needle is truly not moving at all. If there's any play in this, any run out, uh, I don't have the right indicator to measure it. That's a, this is a tenth indicator and I see zero movement in that indicator. So since this only measures to a tenth, we'll say it is less than a tenth. Uh, I wanna check up here as well. It's the last surface I wanna look at. Yes, I'm not, again, I'm not seeing any movement of the indicator at all. We should actually be able to, in theory, we should be able to slide this back and forth and still not see any movement. Yeah, there's no movement in that direction either. And here, I'll come into this groove just so you can see that we really are on it. See, there we drop off. And here, I'll push up so you can see we are really on the other direction as well. So a tense indicator is unable to measure any inaccuracy in this test bar. Again, I'm sure it's not perfect, but I don't have the indicator that... Uh, would even measure um, any run out on the test bar itself. So I think what this tells us is that we can trust the test bar. So the idea now is I'm going to mount this test bar in the spindles. The spindle is gonna stick out here, so it's not gonna be perfect because we're probably gonna have a weight issue where I'm gonna to have to hold this guy down uh, to measure. Uh, but now we can essentially measure the where the bearing surfaces are on the outside of the spindle. Because remember the spindle, uh, 
the, the surfaces that we care about on the spindle are the taper on the inside of the spindle that's going to go against this. And we care about the surfaces on the outside of the spindle that the bearings are going to ride on or that the bearings press onto. So let's get that together. Okay, so this is the original spindle that the machine came with. And yeah, I'm going to have to hold this down. So that's less than ideal, um, but it should still be okay. Uh, okay, we have two bearings that ride down here. So this surface matters. There's an, there's an angular contact bearing that rides here, and there's a ball bearing that rides up here. And then we have a ball bearing that rides up here as well. So let's check this surface first. Two tenths. Yeah, I think we have two tenths there. Yeah, I'm seeing two tenths repeat down here in the bearing surface. So, all right, let's move to sort of the top here. This is where that ball bearing rides. Three tenths. And I'd say we have three tenths here. And it's about eight tenths uh, up here. So eight tenths seems like a lot to me for not that far away from, because you figure our taper's down here, the top of this is somewhere around here. So we're really seeing uh, eight tenths or close to a thou, not that far away. Seems high to me, but let's see what the other spindle is. All right, and here is the replacement spindle that they sent me. So let's check all of the same bearing surfaces. All right, first bearing surface. It's higher. Yeah, there's every bit of four tenths there. Honestly, almost half a thou. Yeah, we'll call it four tenths. And it repeats. Uh, this is definitely higher. Well, this is really disappointing. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, I'd say eight tenths. Uh, <laughs> Two thou. More. There's more than two thou there. We're going from four tenths to just over two and a half thou. Yeah, I mean, we'll call it two thou. It's, uh, it's difficult for me to spin it in exactly the right position, so some of that might be variation in surface finish here. Oh, it does actually, it stays pretty consistent if I'm just moving it like this. But you can see it's repeating. There's every bit of two thou there, so that's really disappointing. Uh, the replacement spindle is significantly less accurate than the original. 
And again, I mean, these are the bearing surfaces I'm checking on. There's a ball bearing that goes here, and there's two bearings that go down here. And we're, we're mounted onto the test bar at the taper. I mean, these are the surfaces that matter for this guy to spin. So I don't know, guys. Um, I'm thinking that maybe, I mean, the original spindle is still not great. But I'm wondering if the error that we were seeing was maybe in the bearings. I don't know. I guess even the original one, so we were, what, I think eight-tenths out here? I mean, that's still a lot. Uh, again, you figure the upper part of this taper is somewhere, like what, like up here? So it's surprising to see, even on the, the good one, eight thou off on this bearing surface up here. I don't know. Tell me what you think down in the comments. I'm not sure... Uh, not sure where to go from here. Guys, thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments what you would do at this point. I did want to give one more shout out to these guys since they did help me out with the cost on this uh, this test bar. Uh, this is Glasser Machine Tools. Uh, they're out of California. Uh, they make some stuff in-house in the United States, and uh, a lot of their other stuff is import. They did. Uh, they were up front with me that this test bar is an import. I don't remember where it's from. Uh, but the part number on this, if you want to pick one up, is R8-TestBar. So pretty easy to remember. And again, this is Glassern Machine Tools. They've actually got a YouTube channel as well, but it seems like most of their videos are on the older side. But the stuff I looked at um, was very useful. So uh, you guys over at Glassern, thank you very much for your, your help on this. Um, you were instrumental in me not continuing to waste time trying to figure out if I even actually had a problem with this machine. So thank you.